At a recent Teletown Hall, Senator Ron Johnson was asked by an attendee who's definitely straight, by the way, about the woke agenda for LGBTQ plus people in schools and how that has led to students using litter boxes in lieu of bathrooms. So it's the same conspiracy theory that just will not die. Now, rather than pushing back or even questioning that narrative, Ron Johnson decided to go along with it and claims that he is well aware of this phenomenon. Let's listen. Uh, hi, Senator. Thank you so much for taking our calls. Um, I have to admit that I was a Democrat until 2016 and I saw the light. Um, I just want to say uh, my niece goes to school in West Bend and she's been telling us stories like that other students have been forcing them to have like litter box to accommodate students who identify as cats. I was wondering if you heard about this and if you've seen what Ron DeSantis has done in Florida with his parental bill of rights. Is that something that you could see happening like on the federal level? Is that something you support? Um, thank you so much for everything you do. Oh, first of all, Jeff, thank you for your support. And and yes, I'm well aware of this. I mean, I think one of the things that COVID did is is uh, parents were looking over their, their kids' shoulders and they became aware of the indoctrination of our children by radical leftists within our education system. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. I, I just heard on uh, a radio talk show how England, for example, has come out, their National Health Service has come out completely different, different uh, recommendation in terms of transgenderism, saying that this is... This is a phase for children. Don't, don't accommodate the phase. Let's you know, work with them through it. Don't don't be putting gender dro blocking drugs in our children, and certainly don't mix them with the sex change operations to minors. I mean, this is sick. What's happening? But yeah, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that we've got uh, some teachers that are, you know, they're actually they're pushing this stuff on our kids. I mean, kids are kids. I mean, they, they think weird things. You know, they go through phase phases. We. Any parent knows that. This is exhausting. This is absolutely exhausting. I'll ask the same question that I asked last time when we talked about this. Why hasn't anyone who claims that there are litter boxes in schools provided us with a single shred of evidence? It is like a game of conspiracy theory telephone where one person says something, another person repeats that, and it just keeps on trickling all throughout society. I've played this video now probably like five times on this show. This is the origin of the entire litter box in school bathrooms phenomenon. One lady from Michigan claiming that she heard this with zero evidence. And since then, Libs of TikTok retweeted her video. And every time this is debunked, somebody else sees that video for the first time, I'm assuming, and then they repeat the claim and it just never dies, but this is where it began. It was addressed by a child uh, a couple months ago that they are put in an environment where there are kids that, are, that identify as a furry, a cat or a dog, whatever. And so yesterday I heard that at least one of our schools in our town has a, in one of the unisex bathrooms, a litter box for the kids that identify as cats. And um, I am really disturbed by that. And I, I will do some more investigation on that. I know it's going on nationwide. I know it is. It's part of the agenda that's being pushed. I don't, I don't even want to understand it. But I think that people need to be aware of it because I am really upset as a parent that my child is put in an environment like that. And um, you know, I'm all for creativity and imagination, but when someone lives in a fantasy world and expects other people to go along with it, I have a problem with that. So I'm just putting that out there. I will investigate more. They just hear things and they're like, oh, that's definitely sufficient for me. Now, there were other things that Ron Johnson said besides agreeing with that conspiracy theory and pretending as if he's well aware of this common occurring phenomenon in the United States. He cites England's NHS saying that gender dysphoria is probably a phase for children. So the NHS is calling for caution with this new guidance saying that gender dysphoria usually does not persist into puberty and that they're over it by then. But this goes against the medical consensus. This flies in the face of long-term studies like this one reported on by the New York Times, which found that very few children change their minds about their gender identity throughout the five years that they were observed, with just 2.5% of the 317 children that they examined reverting back to their gender assigned at birth. Now, not to mention the detransition rate in the UK is incredibly low. For example, one study tracked 3,398 trans people for a year, and out of those people, just 16 expressed regret, which is less than half of a percent. And sure, some expressed regret because they don't like their decision that they made, but others expressed regret 
citing social factors, i.e. bigotry, meaning that it was difficult for them to live as a trans person because there's so much bigotry. So the detransition rate is incredibly low and overwhelmingly doctors in the UK and the United States are getting their gender dysphoria diagnoses correct. They're already very conservative, but because the NHS put out this guidance, it doesn't necessarily prove anything. It's like Canada saying, oh, well, some red states in the United States have banned gender affirming care for minors. Therefore, that's evidence that maybe we should do that as well. No, what you need to look at is the overwhelming majority of of experts and what their opinion is. Sure, you'll find a couple of outliers here and there that claim different things, but the consensus is what you have to go by, and that is what doctors in the United States, the UK, and Canada are all going by when they make these determinations and these diagnoses. So for Ron Johnson to use the new guidelines issued by the NHS as evidence that gender-affirming care is bad is insufficient. But he also said something demonstrably untrue. He said that trans children are getting sex change operations. This is another myth, and it's not happening. But one thing that is happening with regard to uh, genital surgeries in the United States is circumcision. More than 50% of male infants are given irreversible surgery on their genitals called circumcision. Maybe you've heard of this. And it's funny how the transphobes, they never bring this up. They talk about how trans children are getting these surgeries on their genitals. That's bad because it's irreversible and they're too young to consent, but yet they say nothing about circumcision, which is also irreversible. And it happens at infancy in many instances where young boys are not old enough to consent. So if you actually care about these surgeries and the consent of the patient, then why not bring up circumcision as well? It's because they don't actually care about anything. They just want to demonize trans people. Now, people who fear monger about gender affirming care like Ron Johnson, they do so for political reasons. That's number one, but also because they're ignorant and they don't understand or know what gender affirming care entails. As LGBTQ Nation explains, contrary to Johnson and other Republicans fear mongering, the American Academy of Pediatrics, American Medical Association, American Psychological Association, and other major medical mental health organizations all support gender affirming care for young people when appropriate. This often involves affirming young children's gender identity via social transitioning, and in the case of older youths, the use of reverse reversible puberty blockers to hold off the permanent changes of puberty so that young people have more time to understand their gender identities better. Puberty blockers have been shown to significantly reduce lifelong suicide risk among transgender people. So it's not like, you know, a girl goes to a doctor and the mother says, hey, she's a tomboy, maybe she's trans, and they immediately start social transition. That's not happening. That is not happening. That's not the way that this works. And people who are proponents of trans rights like myself wouldn't want that to be the case because that would hurt the cause. If you push transitioning on children and they're not actually experiencing gender dysphoria, then that would lead to a higher detransition rate, which would delegitimize the existence of trans people, which we don't want. So nobody has an interest of pushing people into transgenderism, which is the word that he used there. It's just so preposterous. All we have to do is look at the medical consensus and you'll see what is and isn't appropriate. So Ron Johnson here is fear-mongering about a marginalized population specifically because the GOP has chosen to make this one of their pet issues because this is how they galvanize support. See, Ron Johnson has very unpopular economic policies. He has previously advocated for moving social security to part of our discretionary budget so that way you have to reapprove funding for it every single year and you can control how much money you issue out to recipients of social security he has no economic agenda that americans want so this is why he's resorting to these issues because since he can't actually win against his opponent who's the democrat mandela barnes in this election uh, on you know a living wage health care what he has to do is fear monger and punch down that's what's happening here and he's so desperate that he's even willing to legitimize dumbass hoaxes like the litter box myth that we've heard again and again from republicans and it's just embarrassing but understand for people who feel depressed about this this is only one moment in time when we look back 10 years from now things will change that doesn't mean that transphobia will be erased from society but we will see how preposterous the hysteria was when we all look back and laugh at the lengths that people went to demonize trans people, even suggesting that litter boxes were in schools to, uh, I guess, appease cat-identified students. Like, this is something we're all going to laugh at. But unfortunately, right now, these lies are hurting people, 
and it's just sad. So just understand this is just a moment in history and it will pass. Up yours, up yours, up yours. Sons of bitches, bitches, bitches. Woke moralist, woke moralist, woke moralist. I dreamed I saw my maternal grandmother. She was stroking herself absentmindedly. I let her have her way. The genital region was exposed. I let her have her way.